Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Ulsis, addiction master on most social media. Today I'm going to be talking about cognitive dissonance. I'm going to read an article, probably interrupted here and there. I've got a couple of sites in particular, but one I'm going to read through and I might just go over some of the other sites. There's uh relative understanding of what cognitive dissonance is but i hear it used real loosely in terms that it kind of doesn't make sense to me and i thought i'd go over it again and i mean again not in a podcast sense but i was doing um i was making memes when i first came back to facebook and a lot of the things i was going through was cognitive dissonance cognitive distortions things like that and explaining them and I thought I'd revisit this. I will put the link in the description. Usually I do. If I forget, leave a comment. This way people could look and read the article themselves. Sometimes the articles actually have a, a, a talk. It'll read the article for you, but not this one. This is What is Cognitive Dissonance by Kendra Sherry. It's from the Very Well Mind website. All right, I will probably let you know if I'm skipping between sites because they kind of go together, and I like how one of them is actually has to do it with current things like QAnon and stuff. But I'll start right now. Uh, what is cognitive dissonance? The term cognitive dissonance is used to describe the mental discomfort that results from holding to conflicting beliefs, values, or attitudes. I'm going to stop right there. This is the problem I have sometimes. It's not to be, uh, you know, I guess you could be an asshole or whatever. But it's not the fact that you're holding to conflicting beliefs. A lot of people use the term cognitive dissonance when they mean you're holding two different beliefs or conflicting beliefs. However, it's most commonly used as the term of the discomfort that comes from holding two conflicting beliefs so there's a difference there it's like the difference between exercise could lead to pain you wouldn't describe it and such it's a different context anyway i will continue this inconsistency between what people believe and how they behave motivates people to engage in actions that will help minimize feelings of discomfort people attempt to relieve this tension in different ways such as rejecting explaining away or avoiding new information. Mm -hmm. How do you know? Everyone experiences cognitive dissonance to some degree, but that doesn't mean that it is always easy to recognize. Some signs that you, what you are feeling might be related to dissonance include feeling uncomfortable before doing something or making a decision, trying to justify or rationalize a decision that you've made or an action you have taken, Feeling embarrassed or ashamed about something you've done and trying to hide your actions from other people. Experiencing guilt or regret about something you've done in the past. Doing things because of social pressure or a fear of missing out, even if it wasn't something you wanted to do. Causes. There are a number of different situations that can create conflicts that lead to cognitive dissonance. Force compliance. Sometimes you might find yourself engaging in behaviors that are opposed to your own beliefs due to external expectations, often for work, school, or a social situation. This might involve going along with something due to peer pressure or doing something at work to avoid getting fired. New information. Sometimes learning new information can lead to feelings of cognitive dissonance. For example, if you behave if you engage in a behavior that you later learn is harmful, it can lead to feelings of discomfort. People sometimes deal with this by either finding ways to justify their behaviors or finding ways to discredit or ignore new information. Hello, world! <laughs> Boy, does that fit lots of people. Decisions. People make decisions, both large and small, on a daily basis. 
When faced with two similar choices, people often are left with feelings of dissonance because both options are equally appealing. One choice has been made, however. People need to find a way to reduce these feelings of discomfort. People accomplish this by justifying why their choice was the best option so they can believe that they made the right decision. I wonder if that came up on the mic. That was a chime, right? Influences. The degree of dissonance people experience can depend on a few different factors, including how highly they value a particular belief and the degree to which their beliefs are inconsistent. The overall strength of the dissonance can also be influenced by several factors, including the importance attached to each belief, cognitions that are more personal, such as beliefs about the self, and highly valued, tend to result in greater dissonance. The number of dissonant beliefs. The more dissonant, clashing thoughts you have, the greater the strength of the dissonance. That's pretty interesting. Impact. Cognitive dissonance can make people feel uneasy and uncomfortable, particularly if the disparity between their beliefs and behaviors involves something that is central to their sense of self. For example, behaving in ways that are not aligned with your personal values may result in intense feelings of discomfort. Your behavior contradicts not just the beliefs you have about the world, but also the beliefs you have about yourself. This discomfort can manifest itself in a variety of ways. People may feel anxiety, embarrassment, regret, sadness, shame, stress. Cognitive dissonance can even influence how people feel about and view themselves, leading to negative feelings of self-esteem and self-worth. Because people want to avoid this discomfort, cognitive dissonance can have a wide range of effects. Dissonance can play a role in how people act, think, and make decisions. They may engage in behaviors or adapt or adopt attitudes to help relieve the discomfort caused by the conflict. Some things that a person might do to cope with these feelings include adopting beliefs or ideas to help justify or explain away the conflict between their beliefs or behaviors. This can sometimes involve blaming other people or outside factors, hiding their beliefs or behaviors from other people. People may feel ashamed of their conflicting beliefs and behaviors, so hiding the disparity from others can help minimize feelings of shame and guilt. Only seeking out information that confirms their existing beliefs. This phenomenon, known as the confirmation bias, affects the ability to think critically about a situation, but help helps minimize feelings of dissonance. Now, I'll stop the article right here. This is important. This confirmation bias, these things, I like to put them in the list of cognitive distortions, which is why I would categorize things differently and say, oh, well, this is a cognitive distortion. It, it's leading to this, and you're getting feelings of discomfort, which are cognitive dissonance. Not just saying that's cognitive dissonance. Anyway, I will continue. People like to believe that they are logical, consistent, and good at making decisions. Cognitive dissonance can interfere with the perceptions people hold about themselves and their abilities, which is why it can often lead, it can often feel so uncomfortable and unpleasant. Dealing with dissonance. When there are conflicts between cognitions, thoughts, beliefs, opinions, People will take steps to reduce take steps take steps to reduce the dissonance and feelings of discomfort. They can go about doing this a few different ways, such as adding more supportive beliefs that outweigh dissonant beliefs. People who learn that greenhouse emissions result in global warming might experience feelings of dissonance if they drive a gas guzzling vehicle. In order to reduce this dissonance, they may seek out new information that overrides the belief that greenhouse gases contribute to global warming. <laughs> you see how fucking silly humans can be? 
I saw an article that people don't have an inner monologue. Have I mentioned this on my podcast? I got to do a fucking podcast on it. It just freaks me the fuck out. But here you go. Instead of it, see, my brain went if they get dissonance from driving in a gas guzzling, guzzling vehicle, they would get a vehicle that has less gas guzzling and it would reduce their dissonance. But no, they'll seek out information that overrides that belief. It's just, you know, how we work as humans. I'll continue. Reducing the importance of conflicting belief. A man who cares about his health might be disturbed to learn that sitting for long periods of time during the day is linked to a shortened lifespan. Since he has to work all day in an office and spends a great deal of time sitting, it is difficult to change his behavior. To deal with the feelings of discomfort, he might instead find some way of rationalizing the conflicting cognition. He might justify his sedentary behavior by saying that his other healthy behaviors, like eating sensibly and occasionally exercising, make up for his largely, largely sedentary lifestyle. Changing your belief. Changing the conflicting cognition is one of the most effective ways of dealing with dissonance, but it is also one of the most difficult. Particularly, in the case of deeply held values and beliefs, such as religious or political leanings. Hello? It's so relevant. I guess it always is. When it was just come up, I was like, I think in the 50s or 40s. Anyway, I'll continue. Potential pitfalls. Sometimes the ways that people resolve cognitive dissonance can contribute to unhealthy behaviors or poor decisions. In quote, a theory of cognitive dissonance, end quote, Leon Festinger, the psychologist who first described this phenomenon, gave an example of how a person might deal with dissonance related to a health behavior by discussing individuals who continue to smoke, even though they know it is bad for their health. There are a few ways that a person might resolve this dissonance. According to Festinger, a person might decide that they value smoking more than they value health deeming the behavior worth it in terms of risk versus reward. Another way to deal with this dissonance is to minimize potential drawbacks. The smoker might convince themselves that the negative health effects can be overstated. They might also assuage assuage, (laughs) their health concerns by believing that they cannot avoid every possible risk out there. Festinger also suggested that people might try to convince themselves that if they do stop smoking, they will gain weight, which also presents health risk. By using such explanations, the smoker is able to reduce the dissonance and continue the behavior. Interesting. History of of Cognitive Dissonance Leon Festinger first proposed a theory of cognitive dissonance centered on how people try to reach internal consistency. He suggested that people have an inner need to ensure that their beliefs and behaviors are consistent. Inconsistent or conflicting beliefs lead to disharmony, which people strive to avoid. In his 1957 book, A Theory of Cognitive Dissonance, Festinger explained, Cognitive dissonance can be seen as an antecedent condition, which leads to activity oriented toward dissonant reduction. Just as hunger leads towards activity, oriented toward hunger reduction. It is, very, it is a very different motivation from what psychologists are used to dealing with, but as we shall see, nonetheless powerful. A word from very well. Cognitive dissonance plays a role in many value judgments, decisions, and evaluations. Becoming aware of how conflicting beliefs impact the decision-making process is a great way to improve your ability to make faster and more accurate choices. Mismatches between your beliefs and your actions can lead to feelings of discomfort and sometimes coping choices that have negative impacts. But such feelings can also sometimes lead to change and growth. So that would end the very well portion. I'll put the link in the uh, description. So... This is a good article. I like it. There's a lot that it goes on in the mind, and this could be something silly and small to some people, maybe to most. 
But when we live in the world we live in, this can be the trigger for uh, stress episodes and paranoia. They could be triggers for PTSD and things of that nature. Because we could be a well-rounded person, we get our life together, but there's always this nagging thing throughout life, and if you dive into it, get a little bit of knowledge, and properly, as you can see in here, you will look to override that belief. So, I had a um, podcast I did on, um, I think it was some political thing I was doing, and it just showed what people will do and you can create so many mind experiments and thought experiments about um you know the co2 emissions right and you could have 90 percent of the scientists agree on something and fine i think it's good to be skeptical but they'll look for that thing to override that belief and you see what the examples they gave with smoking and so Psychology Today had a little thing about it. I thought I'd read that. How we deal with cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance poses a challenge. How can we resolve the uncomfortable feeling that arises when our thoughts or actions clash with each other? Some responses may be more constructive than others. A man who learns that his eating habits raise the risk of illness feels the tension between his preferred behavior and the idea he could be in danger. He might ease this feeling by telling himself that the health warning is exaggerated or, more productively, by deciding to take action to change his behavior. If a woman reads that her favorite politician has done something immoral, she could conclude that the charges have been invented by his enemies, or instead, rethink her support. What are some effects of cognitive dissonance? It may lead us to alter our attitudes to be more consistent. Study participants who complete an uninteresting task have been found to rate the task more enjoyable if they were first asked to tell someone it was enjoyable, an effect attributed to cognitive dissonance. Theoretically, dissonance may contribute to a variety of changes in behavior or beliefs. Uh, I didn't say this before, but a lot of these sites they have highlighted words and theories and things like that you they lead to great links to other sites that have a more descriptive um explanation how do you avoid cognitive dissonance there are a variety of ways people are thought to resolve the sense of dissonance when cognitions don't seem to fit together they may include denying or compartmentalizing unwelcome thoughts. <laughs> Seeking to explain away a thought that doesn't compart with others. Or changing what one believes or one's behavior. Is cognitive dissonance a bad thing? Not necessarily. By bringing attention to the inconsistencies in our minds, cognitive dissonance may present an opportunity for growth. People who feel it could realize, for example that they need to update their beliefs to reflect the truth or change their behavior to better match the person they want to be. Now, this is important because, yes, it doesn't have to be a bad thing in that sense, but we are creatures of habit. If you want to talk to Sam Harris about free will, we're just momentum of our experiences and our genetics mixed. We're going to make decisions. We're going to make decisions. But when you look at this on the surface level and get a little deeper, you can understand, okay, if I understand about it more, maybe that would bring the necessary change. So instead of compartmentalizing and making excuses and justifying it, which you have to do sometimes anyway, I get it. There are situations and thought experiments you can do that could, you know, let you see clearer some of these things. But I thought this was interesting. It was a little blurb on psychology today. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. We could bring about change. And it all, that could also say, um, you could look at people who are overweight, because I consider myself overweight, and where you're at in your life, and 
other excuses, right? So you could go to doctors and if they give you that diagnosis, oh, you got a thyroid problem or something like that. Okay, well, you know, maybe that cognitive dissonance wasn't worth it. That I didn't have to eat well. I have to exercise and do all my things. And you can see where it plays in the mind. We all do this. I used to smoke when I was younger and I never really was a big cigarette smoker, cigarette smoker, you know. But there are a lot of different ways people deal with it. And I would buy, a, I would have, a, I had a pack of cigarettes, my last pack of cigarettes, and I had it open sitting in front of me. I didn't want it to be something that was hidden from me. I wanted to see it every day, smell it every day. That doesn't mean I don't smoke pot, which I do, but I vape now more often, protecting my lungs. So, this was Psychology Today. Um, I'll try to remember to put this link in it. Then there was something else I found that I thought was interesting. Also from Psychology Today. I'll try to go through this quick. But it's called QAnon, Cognitive Dissonance and Facts When Prophecy Fails by Glenn Geher. PhD. In 1954, Dorothy Martin of Illinois reported receiving messages from aliens. The aliens indicated that a great flood would cause many deaths and catastrophic damage was set to take upon December 21st of that year. The good news was that they were sending a spaceship to save her and anyone else she could convince of this reality at 4 o'clock on December 17th to her backyard, no less. She was pretty convincing, apparently and turned up a decent-sized group of folks who were interested in surviving on December 17th. Renowned social psychologist Leon Festinger and his research team, 1954, became interested in this case and decided to infiltrate and study the group to see how the members of this movement responded in light of the strong possibility that Mrs. Martin's prophecy would fail. And fail it did. No spaceship showed up on the 17th. Now, as I'm reading this, you could have a little thought experiment on your own, thinking, where were your thoughts leading to? Are you coming up with reasons why it could be real? I see this every day from the best friends and the most loved family members. It is so part of who we are. It's charming in a way, but anyway, I'll continue. Upon this disquieting event, the aliens reportedly recontacted Miss Martin and indicated that they changed the dates and that they would now be coming at midnight on the 20th. The members of the movement again waited in palpable anticipation, but alas, the pilot of that ship also failed to show up on time. Uh-huh. Confused and disappointed, on the 21st, the members then received, reportedly, a message of hope from the aliens saying that their beliefs in this prophecy created so much light that God decided to spare the Earth from the impending flood that the aliens had previously talked about. <sighs> Martin's followers were, of course, overjoyed, and many of them totally bought into the story. Festinger and his team found all these actions interesting. Cognitive dissonance and the human experience. A core idea in the field of social psychology is that of cognitive dissonance theory. See Festinger and Carl Smith, 1959. This basic idea suggests that a core motivating factor in our psychology is that we like to hold beliefs that are consistent with one another. Holding ideas that are inconsistent with one another, i.e. I value my health uh, enormously, I just eat a whole tub of ice cream, can be distressful. It can often motivate us to rearrange our cognitions to justify things. If it was pistachio ice cream, pistachio for many health benefits, I'll die tomorrow. You get it, right? You'll just come up with these type of answers and things. This basic process can help explain a broad array of human behaviors, causing people to arrange all kinds of mental gymnastics and try to get their thoughts to be in harmony with one another. See Gerhard, 2005. Via cognitive dissonance reduction processes, people justify such actions as staying in unhappy relationships, making purchases that are obviously questionable, conducting unpleasant tasks, taking actions that might be rooted in facts, that might not be rooted in facts, and more. Cognitive dissonance reduction is, in effect, a core motivator of human behavior. When Mrs. Martin's prophecy failed in 1954, one approach to dealing with this situation could have been simply to shrug and say, I guess we were wrong. But doing so would have created a great deal of dissonance on the part of the members in, of the movement. 
These were people who had said goodbye to loved ones, packed their bags, and had fully publicly committed to the prophecy that Ms. Martin had spelled out to reduce the dramatic levels of cognitive dissonance caused by the fact that the spaceship never arrived. The members came up with all kinds of cognitive rationalizations, even to the point of convincing themselves that their actions had actually saved the entire planet. Wow, right? Such is the power of cognitive dissonance. The curious case of QAnon. In the New York Times podcast hosted by Michael Barbaro, and there's a link here, it's highlighted. The recent QAnon movement described in detail comes across very much parallel to the situation surrounding the spaceship that never came to Illinois in 1954. The QAnon movement... Google Emmy 2020, 2020 is considered by many to be an extremist or alt-right conspiracy movement that the party was devoted to ensuring the re-election of Donald Trump. Q, an anonymous message board poster, claimed to be a high-level federal insider who had access to all kinds of confidential documents. Q reportedly described evidence suggesting that a group of high-powered Satan worshippers, who were also pedophiles, ruled the world and that Donald Trump and his followers were set to make a positive change. Ultimately, to save the children from these evil doers. Q described many predictions related to this conspiracy, including a prediction surrounding a storm in which thousands of members of the Satan worshiping cabal would, largely under Trump's leadership, be arrested in a single day. That day initially was set as November 3rd, 2017. In fact, as in Illinois in December 1954, nothing happened. As with the case, folks, as with the case with the folks awaiting the spaceship in 1954, the lack of a storm on November 3rd, 2017 did not dissuade the followers of Q, who had come to the number of millions, and become part of what would be called the QAnon movement. The followers of Q, who had taken steps consistent with Q's predictions, listened to Q, who justified all kinds of outcomes along the way. Ultimately and tragically, the several members of this movement, many believing that they were totally in the right, were part of the riot on Capitol Hill on January 6th that killed the multiple U.S. citizens dead. Based on Q's predictions, several of these individuals had experienced martial law to be called, and they had fully expected Trump to remain in the White House, in spite of the impending inauguration plans for the then-president-elect Joe Biden. Of course, none of this played out, and as the history books will tell it, a disgraceful, a tragic event leading to several wrongful deaths took place based upon the efforts of these individuals and based importantly on the QAnon phenomenon. QAnon and Cognitive Dissonance When predictions of Q, such as the failed prediction of the storm on November 2017, failed to actually take place, followers of this movement might have, from a scientific fact-based perspective, simply concluded that Q was a fake and that the whole movement was questionable. However, just like the folks who had signed up for the spaceship in Illinois in 1954, doing so would have left these individuals with a high level of cognitive dissonance. Many of them had QAnon bumper stickers, had joined online forums supporting the connecting, supporting and connecting with this movement, etc. Once you commit to something, it is hard to justify saying that you were wrong. It is easier to rearrange your cognitions to tell yourself that you are right and somehow the facts actually support both what you already believe as well as whatever the observable reality of the situation is. In short, the QAnon followers might be thought of as quite similar to Illinois folk waiting for the spaceship that never came. When the prophecy failed, Instead of just going with the reality of the situation, many of them doubled down on their beliefs. And on January 6th, when several of them stormed the Capitol so as to push QAnon agenda forcibly, the outcome was both embarrassing and truly tragic. Sometimes one side is right. As I argue in this related article to simply titled, Why Trump is Just Wrong, there's a link. Sometimes one side is simply correct. Nearly any and all attempts to demonstrate that the election was somehow stolen were shown to be fully 
baseless by court after court. However, as addressed provocatively in this thoughtful piece by Alan Sokai, we live in a world now largely values the idea of reality being rel- relativistic in many ways. In such a world, dismissing other facts is common, and as Sokai points out, this is a problem. While many facts of the reality of the human experience are in fact socially constructed and capable of having multiple meanings in different cultural contexts, at the same time, there is a real world out there, and we can observe and know it in many ways. This is largely what science is all about. When people start sticking to the version of reality that most closely matches what they want to see, processes such as cognitive dissonance reduction kick in and we end up getting situations where people refuse to give up their beliefs no matter what the factual evidence might be presented to them. On January 6th of this year, these processes came to a head when the followers of the widely off-base QAnon movement, along with several others who were aligned with the broader youth cause, led a riot on Capitol Hill that led to several deaths. It's simply tragic. Cognitive dissonance reduction is not small detail when we're talking about the human experience. Bottom line. People don't like to be wrong, and we have a hard time reconciling information that does not match our beliefs. When presented with facts that challenge our beliefs, via processes such as cognitive dissonance reduction, we often dismiss these facts or spin them in ways that allow them to be consistent with our beliefs and prior actions. While such cognitive dissonance reduction processes are foundational and profoundly human, they can also be quite problematic as evidenced by the QAnon movement and the riot capital on January 26th. Wow. This fascinates me. The human condition has always fascinated me. If you listen to one of my podcasts, uh, Who is Joseph F. Olsis? I go through my life in a general way. It was, my, it was one of my first podcasts. It's horrible, probably. But I talk about my, my the, the events that led to who I am today. So by 13, I started realizing... My mom had uh, some mental health issues. By the time I'm 16, I'm reading books, uh, dozens of books on psychology and everything you can imagine. I talk about this and I'm sitting in the kitchen trying to help her, um, you know, just doing my best to uh, figure out what was going on. And it led to shaping who I am. That and meditation kind of really Uh, were my foundations to, you know, be strong in these times. But we have to face these facts about us. I hope this is interesting to people, getting to learn things. It just becomes a good habit, even hitting those little links. And I do it for bad things, too. I want to know, when I say bad things or things that I think are incorrect, I talk about sometimes on how to do a search. So if you're going to do... um you know, uh, El Salvador, just type it neutral. Then you want to, El Salvador is good. And you want to search that. You want to search El Salvador. And it just could be for context and what is actually going on. So you can go uh, Trump, a certain fact about it. But you want to search it in different ways because your biases are inherent. They're in you. And you might look a certain way at a certain piece of evidence to just justify the feeling of discomfort. It's fascinating I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's getting ready to get back to normal. We're progressing, hopefully, in a good way, but not to take anything for granted. Till next time, take care.